Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Semi original guy here, aka Mr. Ken from Vance's Bowhead, bringing you another replay. Now, today we're going to be starting something a little bit different. We are going to be casting a different random live league game, hopefully, as much as we possibly can. I'm going to try to make it a daily thing. If it won't be daily, it'll be every two days or so. Now, today we have Elio versus the Herbivorous in the live league. This was in Fog of War. Both of these players are roughly around 1400. Elo in the global league so hopefully we're gonna have some pretty dynamic play here this is a tier 3 match in fog war we have kindle versus sonia now kindle will get a day-to-day -day bonus of 40 percent firepower on urban terrain mostly her cities but i believe it's all urban terrain now uh due to the update now very very cool stuff her urban blight co-power will do three damage to anything on a city globally and also increase your firepower to 80% on cities. Her high society power will increase your firepower by 3% per urban terrain owned and give her a 130% firepower bonus. So very, very devastating, very, very dynamic stuff right there. There's been a lot of changes to Candle recently. She's actually moved up to tier two in the Global League standards. So very, very cool stuff. We're gonna expect to see a lot more Kindle plays against, you know, matchups like Olaf or Eagle and all that stuff. So pretty cool stuff. Now, Sony on the other hand will get a day-to-day -day bonus where her HP is hidden from her opponent and she actually gets a negative penalty to luck, unfortunately. So we're not gonna be getting any luck rolls on Sonya. Now, in addition to that, her counterattacks do hit for 1.5 times harder. Now, counterattacks aren't really going to be doing, like, all that much, but it does synergize pretty well with her co-power, or her super co-power, I should say. Now, her co-power is enhanced vision. This will allow her to get a plus one bonus to her vision, in addition to her already plus one bonus from her day-to-day -day abilities. Now, that means that recons will be able to see, like, a grand total of, like, seven squares, which is pretty, pretty good. They'll also be able to see into hidden terrain, like, forests and reefs and her super cool power, Counter Break. Probably one of the more slept on powers in Advanced Souls by Web. Actually allows her to first strike on the opponent's turn. So if you are attacking Sonya on your turn, she's gonna be able to attack first. So that is some pretty devastating, pretty powerful stuff. Uh, whether or not it's gonna be enough to take out Kindle, who knows we're gonna find out together folks so let's go ahead and get into this match i'm gonna cast it right away and we're gonna see what happens here now unfortunately elio um actually urban bars i'm gonna be changing you you are actually going to be playing as yellow comet today so there you go buddy there you go very cool stuff so herbivores we're gonna see if he turns into a carnivore in this game and elio we're gonna see if that high society will pay off here all right so we're just going to power through the first couple days because you guys know what happens in the first couple days. It is only standard infantry builds. Got to get the infantry on the field, folks. Number one priority. Now, we're going to stop at like day five here because this is where we start to get a little bit more dynamic play. Now, it looks like Elio has actually skipped the city here, going right for the city here. So we're um, getting rid of a little bit of income to go for a further city. So that's just okay. Uh, you do see a lot of players tend to do that. Higher levels... You see it a little bit more, possibly. But it really just depends on if it ruins your tank order, right? But as you can see here, uh, Kindle is uh, getting 8,000 every single turn. Uh, it will be 9,000 after this property is capped. So next turn, they are going to have access to 9,000 funds, which will get you your tank to double infantry every single turn. So there's pretty much no love lost there when it comes to skipping the property. Now, Herbivorous, let's go ahead and get through this. So, they're going to be getting 7k every turn, 8k every turn, 9k every turn. So, in the grand scheme of things, not really too much is different when it comes to that. Alright, so we're going to skip now all the way to day 6. Now, we have a tank build down here from Elio, which is pretty cool. Uh, weak side tank, not necessarily the strongest opener, but it is going to help with defending this area over here. Hopefully get some early engagements by the looks of it, but Herbivorous is actually going strong side tank over here. So, strong side, you know, always a good spot to build your first tank from. Uh, you can't really go wrong with strong side tank. It is backed up by quite a bit of forces. Uh, literally almost double the infantry count, so very, very cool stuff. We also have a recon build. Um, like I said, Sonya's recons, uh, they are going to have, uh, what is it, like a bunch of vision. You know, six vision instead of five, so pretty cool stuff. All right, so 
Elio Kindle going up. Starting to cap on one, two, three, four, five property system. So it's going to bring that income up quite a bit here. Uh, Herbivorous is going to finish a bunch of caps here as well. So Herbivorous is going to be getting a grand total of 13,000 monies every single turn. That is going to be able to get you a comfortable tank. Uh, maybe even a recon build, an infantry, or just double infantry and bank up that funds for like a double tank build later on. Or even a battlecopter, you know. Um, actually, 13,000 funds is perfect for a battlecopter, three infantry as well. Uh, that will amount to 12,000, so you will have a thousand left over by the end of that turn. Uh, a little bit of extra money in the bank, you know what I mean? Alrighty, so continuing on, it looks like um, Urban Wars builds a recon out of the weak side, recon out of the strong side, going double vision up here. Vision, incredibly important in Fog of War. You never, never slouch on your recons. You always got to have at least a couple on the field. Um, yeah, super, super important stuff, folks. Super, super important stuff. Now, Herbivores has a couple options here. You know, we can uh, be risky, maybe go sit on the city, maybe go mid. You never really know what's going to be happening. You do know that relatively your opponent is going to be in a similar position to you, right? So if you're pushed out this far, you can assume your opponent's probably pushed out about that far on their side as well. Um, let's see what Herbivores decides to do. So going for a pretty forward cap on one of their infantry, going for one of the center properties, sends the recon forward, doesn't see anything cap in the comm tower yet. So very cool stuff. And sends the tank all the way to the force. Very strong position to be in. Um, any chance you get to put a unit in the forest, put a unit in the forest. You want to be occupying this forest house as much as you can in Fog of War. Um, so we do scale one of the infantry capping, and boom, we have a little a bit of a trap card played here. Two tanks are kissing at the moment. Um, Herbivorous is actually definitely in a strong position with that one. This tank was unable to spot the in, or spot this tank in the forest. Ended up getting trapped. That is going to allow it to get first struck next turn by the looks of it here. Um, aside from that, North really just uh, slowly pushing here. Sending a tank forward. Definitely putting a lot of threat on that infantry. Uh, definitely important to get that cap though you know we definitely do want to be getting that cap we want to hold that income for as long as we can well let's see what herbivores decides to do because we do have options right now going for the comm tower going for a back cap on one of the properties capping that center property putting the recon on the city i think this is a pretty smart move all things considered because i believe yeah so due to sonia's increased vision we're able to see that there's three infantry right here. Other CEOs would not be able to see these three infantry, but uh, Sonya is actually able to. So she knows that if she puts the infantry to start capping this property, well, that's one, two, three infantry that can uh, go to interrupt that. Now, due to the defense and the no additional firepower day to day, it would not be a one hit KO or a two hit KO on that. Uh, the infantry would actually survive with one HP, I believe. But. You don't want to be losing an infantry this early in the game. So recon onto the city is a pretty smart idea in my opinion. Okay, so day 9 rolls around and we have some stuff happening here. We do have a potential attack onto this infantry here. Now, if you want to keep your infantry fresh, obviously the best course of action probably for something like this would be to go tank inf or tank bleh. Tank shot infantry shot and then put your infantry on i believe and he might not be able to get onto this tile though by the looks of it so we'll see what happens here oh that's probably even better yeah okay yeah never mind. <laughs> i was thinking kind of silly there yeah the tank's able to wrap around here so tank shot first infantry shot going in for the cap Making it pretty awkward for any sort of attack to happen here because you will have to attack from the road, which is zero defense terrain um, versus a one star defense terrain. So 10% defense is like huge in the grand scheme of things, but the amount of counter attack damage you would take is pretty devastating. Plus, with Sony not having um, any day to day luck, taking this engagement would probably end up being even and eventually you would just fall short in the long run there. So you don't really want to be taking that engagement, I don't think. Nope, we are not taking that engagement. But we do got two tanks on the way in a battle cup, so that's pretty strong. There's a strong builds over here over on the uh, weak side. So we are going to be able to push those up and start doing some combat over here. Now, day 10, 
it looks like Elio is able to cap a couple properties. Going for one of the back properties finally too. Uh, a little bit slow on the draw on that one, but not necessarily terrible in the grand scheme of things. You know, you don't necessarily need those back properties right away. All the fighting is going to be done on your front lines, right? So you want to have as many units on the front line as possible. And I mean, these back properties, you know, they're going to get capped eventually, so it doesn't really too matter too much. All right, so Elio moves up. Double tank, triple tank over here. Uh, two tanks down here. Did take that little bit of damage here. So we got a little bit of a heal, but then we moved off. We don't really want to heal it too much. All right, Sony moving in to do a three-pronged attack, four-pronged attack right here um, in order to try to secure one of the cities. Now, this is a... This is an interesting way to attack. Now, I don't necessarily disagree with this uh, way of attacking. So... And there's really just one reason for it. Um, if you actually attack with your recon first, your recon would take a significant amount of chip damage and then it would actually make it super vulnerable to be in one shot. Now, a recon on a road versus a tank, I believe there is a chance to one shot it. It's somewhere around like maybe 93 to 102%, something like that. So by not taking any chip damage, you actually make it so two units have to attack that in order for it to be destroyed. So we'll see what happens with that. So Battle Cup is moving in, tanks moving in up north um, to try to contend with this right now. So we have absolutely no idea what's here. I have absolutely no idea what's here. We've got no vision at the moment. Recons are moving south, infantry are moving south. Looks like we're going to be occupying the center a little bit. Uh, but we do keep our three infantry line up here to lull the opponent into a false sense of security, more or less, here. So, very, very nice. We got our anti-air on the field. Definitely got to get the anti-airs on the field at least by day 10, 11, uh, day, day 9, definitely. Something like that. You definitely got to get them out on the field, is what I'm saying. Alright, so Recon actually survives with 1 HP from this attack down here. Um, which is very interesting that we didn't go for the KO. I wonder why we would not have gone for the KO. I guess we just didn't feel like sacrificing a unit. Yeah, it's more. That's fine. That's fine. Unfortunately, we didn't get the KO, but we don't lose any additional units in the long run here. So it is possible that maybe the Herbivores might be feeling a little bit feisty and go up for a double attack here. Now, if he does decide to do that, it's going to be pretty risky because he does see a Recon here that has a lot of vision, but it's also going to put him right beside a Urban Terrain. So anything that attacks from that spot would be counter-attacked from Urban Terrain, and as we know, Kindle has that 40% firepower on this train, so that tank... That's bait. You don't want to be going for that tank. Not worth it. Not worth losing a huge chunk of your army right there. Because essentially what would happen is you might end up losing two tanks for the price of one. So not, not advisable for sure. Um, Elio looks like we pushed down a little bit, but now we're pulling right back up. I believe that we had a little bit of vision here. Um, no, we didn't have any vision of this. So we're just being careful. We're being cautious. Uh, ooh, looks like Irby is going up for an attack with a recon. Uh, did take a little bit of chip damage on that recon, so it's a little bit vulnerable at the moment. We go up and we attack an infantry. Build a classy medium tank. Beautiful, folks. That's exactly what you want to see in, uh, in advanced force. You want to see classy golden medium tanks. is popping up on the field. That's, that's what you want. That's what you need. The classiest of classies. All right, not really pushing too much, uh, too far into that attack. Definitely taking out the recon, eliminate that vision um, with the two prompt attack from this tank and this infantry. The rest of the guys are just going to be sitting back. Nice artillery placement right here, actually protecting the forest terrain. Very cool stuff. Um, aside from that, not really going to be pushing up south and just keeping things nice and open over here, given the false sense of security. Definitely got a huge amount of units up here, which is very, very threatening and very, very dangerous. And the stinking Neo tank all the way in the background, just stinking up the place. So it looks like it is going to be coming in hot, folks. It's going to be able to reach the forest tile next turn. Then one, two, three, four, five, six. Right into the heart of things. That's what's going to be happening here. 
All right, take a little bit of engagement on the infantry down on the mountain down south and just moving the rest of the units uh, into a big old line. Yeah, look at that big old line. Definitely doing some civil war tactics down here, just straight down the line, just inviting the opponent to come in and attack. Builds a classy boy of the sky. So that is beautiful. That's beautiful right there. That's a good little combination. Good little combination. All right, so Elio. Sensing weakness actually decides to move in some of the units taking out two infantry with that little engagement um, Now is it possible for them to go in and do any additional strike? Now we do see that we have a couple tanks here So we have two tanks or three tanks right now That are gonna be able to go in and possibly strike two tanks So I'm not sure if we're gonna be going in for that attack, but it is a possible attack and Boom, yeah, we go we go in we go in, fully take out one tank, injure another tank, and actually begins capping on a comm tower, which is super interesting. Now that's going to make it so Sonya has to focus something on that. Because the last thing that you really want is Sonya is to lose any firepower. Now with the absolutely no luck day to day, you can't be losing your comm tower, folks. you got to hold on to that if you're going to be able to contend with Kindle in any fashion. <clears throat> and aside from that, let's go up and take a couple more pot shots. Now that's a pretty strong little push. I'm not sure if there's going to be any major counterattack to that. Um, we do have units available though. We got two tanks, three tanks, and a battle copter that's going to be able to assist with that middle. Um, do we have anything else that might be able to assist? We do have a battle copter down here. Might be able to swing up and take a strike at this tank. So there is potential for taking out one tank here. Um, the injured tanks are definitely potential targets for attacks here. So we'll see what happens. So one battle cop swing artillery strikes. And very nice. Okay. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful. And we pop the counter break. Very, very cool. Alright, so counter break. We get to actually see inside those um, forests and hidden terrain. Very, very cool. So we have a lot of vision on the map. See that there's pretty much absolutely nothing here. And there's a few things here, but nothing like too crazy at the moment. So if I was in this position, I would probably assume that there's very little force right here. And the vast majority of Elio's army is right here. Now, however, attacking into this is going to be pretty, um, pretty sketchy. But if you're going to be attacking the Sony counter break, it's definitely the time to do it. Uh, going for luck rolls, <laughs> going for the luck rolls on the the tanks with the infantry. Probably not going to be happening, Estonia. Not going to lie, that negative luck, it's, uh, it's very unlikely that's going to happen. This is probably one of the most beautiful sights in advance was right here. You got a classy boy of the sky and a classy boy of the ground right next to each other. And they are looking, well, they're almost looking dead across at the new thing, but Neo thing is just a little bit out of out of vision. It's it's a little bit higher up, but either way, the intent is there. All right, so we got a co-power, uh, Urban Blight doing that uh, three HP globally to anything on city. Now let's see what kind of damage we actually managed to do. So we're sitting at 141, and we bump it down to 134. So overall, not really a huge amount of damage. Now, one thing that, uh, well, most people do know this, right? But, for those of you that don't, or those of you that might not think about it, so one of the biggest powers of Urban Blight is actually fund sapping. Now, that will take away money from your opponent next turn. Um, so 20% of whatever they just dealt, right? So, herbivores, let's see. So, herbivores would naturally have... 22,100 funds next turn. So we're going to actually pay attention to see how much uh, how much funds they have. Okay, so this is perfect right here. So you see in the replay viewer, all these attacks, Sony actually attacks first on counter break. So very, very powerful stuff. Um, the only thing that you can really effectively attack would be air to tanks, like we just saw right there, and anti-air to battlecopters. Uh, those should still result in KOs. Now, as we see there, boom. So, a guaranteed kill. But, on counter break, because we... Sony attacks first, boom. Take it all the way down to one. 
Now, an important thing to realize is Sony's day-to-day -day does hide her HP, so all these units that are injured, Elio has no idea how much how much um, HP they actually have. So he's playing a big guessing game for sure. Doing a big old push on this comm tower at the moment, actually going to cap it, which is pretty devastating right now. Like I said, if Sony loses that comm tower, it's going to be very, very difficult for her to... Um, contend with Kindle's forces. Now, Kindle, two tower Kindle, uh, she's gonna be having a lot of firepower. A lot of firepower. I mean, on a city, she's gonna have 160% firepower as, as, as a day to day. 120% firepower on all our units across the board, though. Alright, so. Irby, it doesn't look like Irby is going to be letting that get him down, though. He's going in for the attack. Classy boy manages to take out a anti air. Very, very cool stuff. Now, that what targets does his bomber have? Bomber doesn't really have too many targets at the moment. Um, we do have a potential, like, maybe a two-shot attack on this infantry, which could potentially KO it with these two tanks. Um, actually, we have an infantry attack right here and a tank right here. So that's, like, not terrible. That could probably, probably work. Yeah, tank right there, infantry right there, and we KO that, and then maybe be able to bring the bomber in, but we have no idea. We have no idea if there's going to be any sort of uh, anti-air in the background, right? So, I'm going to try to be smart with our engagements. I actually do a little bit of a luck roll here, manage to actually take out the tank, anti-air moves up, takes out the battlecopter. So overall, this was a fairly effective turn for Sonya actually starting a cap. And Bomber goes up and takes up the recon, so eliminating that vision there, so very, very cool. Uh, doing another Civil War tactic down here, folks. Just standing in a line, waiting for the opponent to look or come up and uh, strike you. It's very cool stuff. Alright, so, all in all, I think that was an okay attack. Not really too bad. Unfortunately, Elio only had one anti-air on the field. Now, I am a firm believer, and I'm joyous enjoyer of anti-air. I believe that you should probably have a few more anti-air than just one. Um, potentially at least, like, minimum two. You know, two anti-air is pretty good, because, you know, if you get yourself in a situation like this where you have a bomber in your face, you have no anti-air. It's good to have two anti-air, you know? <laughs> so, get some anti-air on the field. Super important. Alright, so unfortunately Stinky Neo Tank comes up and just blasts this medium tank. Um, quite devastatingly. It's uh, it's not looking good for the medium tank. Medium tank is down all the way to HP. Pops an urban blight, man. Just to get that global damage once again. And the anti-air is moving in. Starting a double cap up north too. Now this cap looks like it uh, was a 5 HP infantry. And now it's a full HP infantry due to the join. This guy is a 10 HP. So this is an immediate threat. This is a secondary threat at the moment. So, yeah, it's not really too bad. We are on day 16 here, and I think things are going to be heating up here pretty pretty quick. <laughs> Whoa! Um, tank going all the way forward here, and uh, just taking a look at the airport, just making sure nothing's coming at the moment. So, yeah, pretty good stuff, you know. I don't know if I would fully overextend this unit. Um, the unit could probably be pretty good as a blocker elsewhere, but, you know, it's nice to have vision over there to make sure that everything is okay. Unfortunately, boom, it's taken out by 9 HP infantry. Not the way that you want things to go down, but sometimes that's the way things go down, folks. Um, yeah, okay, so overall, I'm kind of liking Herbivorous' position at the moment, but it really just depends on what's going to happen with this bomber. Um, if we go up and attack this Neo Tank with this bomber, we definitely gotta surround that uh, that bomber. We do not want to be losing that guy anytime soon. Medium tank is going down. Ooh, yep. So we take a shot on the Neo Tank. I feel like it probably wouldn't. Well, okay. So maybe. Okay. No, this is probably not that bad. So we're probably going to finish up, yeah, okay, Battlecopter comes finish up the new tank, so that's very cool, very nice. Um, we, we got to cover, cover him, cover him though, cover him, use the 4 HP tank, cover him. Would have really liked to see that guy cover him. 
Um, leaving the bomber vulnerable like that is not really something that you want to be doing. Unfortunately, but, you know, is what it is. Is what it is, folks. Um, we do have counter break, though, and it probably, like, at this point, it doesn't really matter necessarily when you pop your counter break. You know, you can pop counter break at the end of the turn. It's literally just as effective as popping it at the beginning of the turn. So I think if you got the counter break and you're expecting some sort of counter attack, you know, you might as well pop it. But, you know, maybe Herbivorous is just waiting for that golden moment to pop the next one. Alright, so Elio, absolutely no power charge at the moment. Uh, well, 150 power charge right now, so he needs like 37k in order to actually get another power. Uh, taking out the comp tower, pretty much no contest there. Comp tower was uh, not going to be capped at any point there. Too many units are around. Even these units here would be able to take that guy out, no problem. Uh, what else? What other options do we have? We know that the Neo tank was taken out there, so... Ooh, just one shot that guy right there. Oh yeah, that's the... Uh, that's that's um, that's the power of uh, Kindle right there. All right, so yeah, unfortunately we spotted the bomber and we go in for the attack, taking it all the way down to one. Ooh, not what you want to see, folks. Not what you want to see. Classy boy of the sky has taken massive damage and is going down. Um, and another neo tank build. Now neo tanks are stinky, but I mean they are strong. So I don't really necessarily see too much of a problem with that, aside from the smell. But Neo Tank is okay. We know that the bomber's been eliminated, so Neo Tank is actually fairly uncontested. Uh, we do know that there is a medium tank still somewhere in the uh, in the dark, but we'll see what happens. All right, so we pop the counter break this turn. Beautiful. All right. This guy is a big threat right now. We definitely do have to do something about that guy. This guy is, um... That's gonna get capped, too. That's, like, pretty risky. Alright, we got a battle cop. Alright, this is probably not really that bad. It's battle copter infantry and a battle copter right there. And then the caps are safe. And then these guys are pretty much free to do whatever they want. Now, south, not really too much is going on at the moment on day 3rd or 17th. Oh, I spoke too soon. Here we go. Alright, Irby is going in down south. And doing quite a few attacks up north as well. All right. Ooh, big shot on the artillery, too. That's a huge, huge hit. Um, so despite us being down by two towers at the moment, we are going in and we are fighting as much as we can. Actually starting a cap on the comm tower at the moment. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Recon is actually able to come up and interrupt this guy. Um, but whether or not that's gonna happen, you know, that's a that's a question. That's definitely a question. Now let's see what else is gonna be happening here. Medium tank going against you. Yeah, keep the classic boy alive. Keep the legend going. That's what I'm talking about, Irby. Good job, buddy. Good job. All right. Now that was a pretty devastating attack here. And if you guys can't tell, um, the times have gone all the way down to increment. So both players are playing on increment. Um, Herbivorous and Elio, you know, they only have two minutes left. Now, I believe that this is... Um, at the moment, for Kindle, I think this is probably approaching that realm of an unwinnable situation. Now, we're starting caps here. We could use the tank to interrupt this cap right here, but we're about to lose the comm tower. There's a huge amount of units here, so I'm pretty sure at this point, Herbivorous is definitely in a winning position here. Um, and as you guys can see here, um, Elio spent his entire turn doing those few moments or movements. So he ended up not being able to finish off his turn here, fortunately. And then Herbivorous just capitalizes on the lost momentum and the lost time and moves in. Then just finishes off the game. And the match is over. Says that it ended in a draw, but I actually believe that this one ended up being in Herbivorous' favor. It's a very, very cool match, folks. Uh, definitely shows a lot of the strength that Sonya has when it comes to Fog War. Now, she might not be your number one pick, but she's got potential. So, you definitely got to watch out for her in Fog War. Counter Break is an incredibly powerful power. 
Now, unfortunately, Elio was not really able to capitalize a lot on the Urban Blights. We never really got an Urban Blight on a turn when it would have been heavily valuable. Like, if we had gotten it during that medium tank build or the bomber build, that would have sapped the funds greatly. So, unfortunately, that's the way it should go sometimes. But I thought that was a terrific game. Hopefully, we are going to be able to find another match tomorrow or the next day to cast. And if you guys enjoy, consider leaving a like, comment, or subscribing. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care of yourselves, and bye-bye for now.